Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, who have we got in the room? Hi Um, there. hiya, hiya. Uh, <laughs> right. Um, okay. Uh, we'll probably leave it a couple of minutes because a few people always come in a little bit later. Um, not least myself. Um, so, um, uh, this is a um, the the start of a new um, book club through the now rebranded data science learning community, um, and. Um, Yes, uh, really, I wanted to do a book club that would cover some Python coding and something a bit more mathematical than the, the book clubs I've done in the past. Um, I've previous, my, I'm Russ, by the way. I've previously been the um, host for book clubs on Shiny development through the R for Data Science Um, um, community. Um, so I, I ran the first cohorts for mastering shiny and shiny, uh, what is it, reduction grade shiny and, and a few other things. Um, yes, this book's a very different prospect. It's more about um, machine learning, the, the, the kind of mathematical underpinnings of it, and um, uses um more kind of python libraries like numpy and 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 scikit learn and, and things um okay so i'm um uh, we'll do some introductions first if that's okay um so yes i'm russ i'm a, a data scientist um for a firm called jumping rivers I, I live in the uk and i've been a mentor with the r for data science community Uh, I don't really know how long, probably eight years, nine years or something like that. Um, I live kind of near Manchester in, in the UK. Um, anyway, uh, would anyone else like to introduce themselves? Who else is in the room? Um, Torin is next on my list, if you'd like to say hello. Hey, yeah, I'm Doran Schaefer. Um, I have facilitated, I just finished facilitating the Fundamentals of Numeric Computation Book Club in Julia. Um, and I've been involved in uh, Advanced R and R Packages Book Clubs. Um, I am a statistics professor um, at Texas A&M. But I haven't read this book before. I I am tenuously here. I'm just like checking it out, seeing if I can, what I might get um, from this. But I know this book is really popular among uh, the PhD students. So, yeah. Right. Cool. Um, anyone else want to speak? There's not many with cameras on. Um, J Rad, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hey, good morning. I'm Jared. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm at uh, a work day today, so I'm just sort of dialing in um, in the cubicle here. Um, and I'm a biometric data science uh, data scientist, so I work with uh, fingerprint matchers, fingerprint templates, face recognition, uh, some iris work, um, and just looking to to do a little bit more Python and uh, some of this. probabilistic ML stuff. So I'm I'm excited. I haven't done a book club and I did uh tidy models. One of the first tidy models book clubs, which was would have been in 2021 or 2022. So it's been a little while. Okay. Cool. Well, welcome. Um who else is there? David, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello. I I'm actually from from finance, and now I am doing a career change to to the science. I'm currently working as research analyst, uh, working with transactional data and application of 
artificial intelligence models to extract information from transactional data. I haven't, I haven't been in, in any backup. This is in my first one. Okay. But I'm patient to, to, to learn more about probabilistic machine learning. Sure, sure. Okay, cool. And then there's two more people. Sohan, would you like to say a few words? Hello, everyone. I'm Sohan. I'm from Kathmandu, Nepal. And I'm currently working as a um, statistical programmer for clinical trials, uh, and I have a bachelor's degree with statistics major. Uh, thanks, I'm excited. Uh, this is my first book club. Okay, cool. And finally, we've got Derek as well. In the... Hi, all. My name is Derek Solberger. I am a data science instructor at Princeton University on the eastern side of the United States. Last year, I led a book club on Bayesian analysis, and I got to teach that course just this past semester. So I'm here to learn more about the material and hope to get um, more into this sector. Thank you. Cool, cool. Um, right. So um, th th typically, what we would do when working th through a book club like this, um, we would um in in the book clubs that I've done in the past, we've typically worked through a chapter a week. But the books that at least that I've covered have have been uh, less less than a thousand pages long. Um, th this book is a much more kind of substantial prospect, and I didn't think it was feasible to cover the whole contents of it. and And really, for a lot of the chapters, I think it will probably, Needs we will need to be um, uh, a little bit. I don't think it will be possible to cover all of the contents of of, of the chapters that we do study, um, because there's an awful lot of information in this book. Um, so, so what we would normally do is we'd have um, a set of notes that we'd update. The, the the kind of kind of summarize the contents of the chapters, the ideas, and um, any kind of um, take home kind of uh, in, information from that, um, and have a bit of a discussion about the chapters during the um, hour long weekly meetings. Um, so uh, f for today, I've gone through. Um, the first chapter of the book, which is a kind of introductory thing that introduces machine learning um, generally and, and, you know, the different types of machine learning, the um, uh, issues related to, you know, the quality of data and, and, and the data sets that are uh, typically used in, in machine learning tasks. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll, we can talk through them in a, in a bit. However, because of the, the, the size of the book, um, I thought it would be good to start the, the, the book club as a whole. The, well, sorry, the, the main body of the, the book club to start in, um, is it section two on um, linear models? And also to study section three of the book, which is on um, a kind of neural network type um, models for machine learning. Um, what that means is that the, the first section of the book, which is on uh, kind of optimization, probability models and things like that, 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 that are kind of the mathematical pinning, underpinnings of, of the later sections of the book, we'll, we may have to look results out of if necessary while discussing the the the, the stuff that we're actually going to cover i hope that's okay with everyone I, I i really didn't think that it would be possible to cover the entirety of this book and do it justice in in any way um okay so i've got some notes um i've not put them into a markdown document yet but i will do after we're finished 
Um, what I'll do is I'll share my screen. Uh -huh. um, if I can. Window. Oh no, sorry, I'll try again. Share screen. Let's stop capture. No, which uh, nope. Sharing the wrong one. Try again. I don't like it. Okay, right. Um, so, uh, if I I'll pull that over here, and I'll pull that over here. Um, yes, I, I'm. Uh, the the spreadsheet here covers the 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 different chapters of the book that I think. we ought to cover um however i i think we should really do maybe two weeks per chapter um this week i'm not doing linear discriminant analysis i'll, I'll just cover the contents of the introductory chapter and, and next week we'll go on to linear discriminant stuff um if that's cool i i don't know whether you, how i for the first episode of a book club it's 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 usually better to to have a kind of overview than to get into the nuts and bolts i think right um okay so um the book itself the, it it's um it's it kind of spawned from a book that was um written a, a decade ago um which was um a uh and and uh, by the same author um and uh, maybe 3 or 4 years ago he, he he split it into two and expanded the different sections so the 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 book that we're covering is the kind of um the, the more kind of introductory material although probably more advanced than any machine learning content i've covered um in the past um and then there's a second book um which i uh which is a, a challenge for another day i think um the the original book was released in 2012 which was like around the sort of time that um sorry I've made a mistake around the time that deep learning and kind of neural network models became more and more popular um and they, and they gained in popularity then because of successes of of neural network models in things like image classification um and um uh, text analysis and things um similarly there was there was a lot of interesting things going on in terms of machine learning um education at the time there was um things like coursera or the preliminary um uh, courses that 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 ended up becoming coursera were, were released to the world so there was like a machine learning course available for free that millions of people studied um around that time um hardware advances as well meant that the training of um neural network models became more um uh the the the, the ability of a kind of um a a, a, a normal computer to train these kind of um models improved um so the gpu this is basically where um 
processors that would typically be used for rendering graphics and 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 video games and things on your computer were um taken advantage of for training um neural network models um and there was also uh something called um what was it called mechanical turk amazon mechanical turk kind of kicked off around that time which was a lot of people kind of annotating data sets for uh, sort of crowdsourced data collection type thing um if i move that over here because i don't feel like looking at this. um yes so this this book um will use a lot of python libraries um and there are notebooks for all the examples um so if you go to the github page um that's mentioned here then there are a range of different notebooks that you can open either in github uh so you can look at the source code for the the notebooks or you can open them in the google colab um kind of um place for running um python code for collaborating on code projects um so we'll probably use a few of these during the the, the book um okay so the 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 python tools that we're going to use in 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 this course it course in this book club um some you'll probably have heard of numpy and scikit learn which are for representation of um arrays and multi-dimensional arrays and for kind of computational mathematics upon them scikit learn is a, a kind of general purpose machine learning toolkit that again is built upon numpy um there are a few more specialist uh packages um Jax and pytorch tensorflow and pymc which will the 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 purpose of will become more clear as we work through the book. Um, but these are a range of tools for doing um, either neural network type models or for doing um, kind of Bayesian probabilistic programming type work in Python. Um, okay, so the introduction. So the introduction to the book um covers um machine learning in in general basically um so a lot of the things that are covered in this chapter you, you may well already know so the different types of machine learning problem um the um the 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 kind of um Um, challenges of any kind of machine learning task and how machine learning fits when compared to statistics, artificial intelligence, and um, data mining and, and, and allied fields. Okay, let's have a discussion then. Um, so um, the first uh, thing on in here is uh, what is machine learning? Um, and I suspect... A few of you already have a, a, an opinion on what that is. If, if anyone wants to kind of chip in with a kind of just overall idea of what machine learning is, feel free. Anyone? Okay, well, certainly machine learning seems to be tied to um, kind of computational um a, a kind of computational process for um, learning from data. Um, and there's a, a quote in the introductory chapter, um, which is written in pretty general terms that it doesn't really do anything for me. Um, so it's about computers learning from experience um with respect to some task 
Um, so what that might be for, say, a supervised learning problem, um, it might be the classification of um, images um, into, into different classes. It might be predicting some value. So a, an example might be predicting house prices based on location and, 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 and all the features of, of the house. Um, so that's some task, so be it classification or regression or clustering or something, um, with respect to some performance measure. And in this book, the, the, the emphasis is on, um, uh, probabilistic modeling. So, um, the, the, there are different approaches that you could apply when a, a, a approaching a machine learning task. Um, and not all of them are probabilistic in nature. Um, so, um, for example, you, um, there are, um, tools called say decision trees which could be used for classification purposes where you might learn uh where you might start with a range of different um uh, features within a data set and try to identify um uh kind of cut off points for each feature that best best kind of partition the data set into um say one class and another um and you can do that in a, a, a entirely on probabilistic way the emphasis here is on probabilistic modeling though so it it it, it, it the, the emphasis is on um making a a kind of uh, a prediction. so for a classification task uh, making a kind of probabilistic prediction for any given example as to whether it's in one class or another um so uh and and similarly with regression um you might have a kind of um uh, a, a likelihood associated with the um predicted value for a, a, a given um uh, example um unless i've misunderstood um ad additionally no I, I i'm fairly certain it will get into it in 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 the book but what I haven't mentioned there is that the um, uh, as part of regression and classification and things, a lot of the methods that will be used in this book are um, um, kind of neural network type things or um, um, a kind of linear model type um, approaches where what happens during the 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 um, where the thing here where the computer learns from experience what it's actually doing in in that kind of model is fitting a range of weights to um a, th that are kind of a component of that model so for a linear model it might be the, the kind of regression coefficients for a uh, neural network type model it would be the weights associated with the nodes within the different layers of that that, that neural network so you're trying to um, tweak the values of those parameters to end up with a model that is better at predicting um, 
whatever it is that your 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 kind of prediction task involves or, or um for for on the supervised or reinforcement learning it's slightly different than prediction um anyway um so uh sorry what what was i trying to get to so for a lot of these a lot of these tasks there are um what you're actually learning is weights and you might be learning the structure of a model um from a data set um and in addition to the um the the kind of output predictions of whether um some test example is should be classified to one um group or another there's a kind of statistical you you might also have a kind of statistical noise over the weights that you're trying to learn so that the the, the weights within the models may be um you may be able to kind of consider them to be drawn from a statistical distribution as well and I'm, I'm almost certain given that um pi mc is being discussed as a a, a, a a package for the the examples in the book that we're going to look at kind of probabilistic weights as well in in here okay so the different types of machine learning um firstly um how do i do this can i get rid of that no i can't go um okay so supervised learning so the 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 typical kind of, kind of things you're doing here are either classifying um the examples in a data set to to one class or another or maybe across multiple different classes or doing regression problems where you're trying to predict a value for one variable based on the values of other variables in, in a data set. Um, so this is, um, so again, we're, we're describing this stuff in terms of a task and in terms of learning from experience and a performance measure. So um, you might have a, a range of inputs and a range of outputs and you're trying to predict the outputs based on the inputs. Um, okay, so a, a typical example might be um, predicting, this is the iris data set, so it might be predicting um, based on um, features like the sepal length and sepal width, predicting whether a flower is from the Setosa versicola or virginica classes of iris. So that's a, a well-known data set used in a lot of kind of statistical learning type textbooks and, and courses and things. You have a um a data set where you have um you've measured these different features for each of the um examples in the data set and you have a known label for um all of your kind of training examples and you try you're trying to learn from that data set how to best predict a a, a previously unseen example um yeah so i'm sure i'm sure you've studied these kind of things before similarly um so that's a classification problem um you may classification problems come in a range of different types you might um be trying to predict one class or another or you might be trying to predict across a range of different classes um okay. uh so uh a, a kind of typical example when where where like 
neural networks enter this is in image classification um whereby you take you convert an image into a a kind of array of numbers showing the intensity of color at different points in that thing and then you take this array of numbers as your input and try and predict from that whether or not there is a cat or a dog or a howl or a mug or whatever present in that picture. Um, the, 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 the kind of structure of the networks that are responsible for those kind of classification tasks that, that, that are based on neural networks can get pretty big. Training those things requires a lot of computational power and um so uh yeah anyway um so that's the kind of input and this is the kind of output that you might expect for a classification task um the the kind of classification task that we might cover in this book um so that's images we've just looked at tabular data which is uh taking like a kind of rectangular data of like measured entities, measured features, and trying to break it from that. Uh, you might similarly work with um, text data, or, you know, biological data, or, or some other kind of thing that you can use for um, as a, a, an input into a classification uh, algorithm. Um, the kind of where are we? Regression. The next main kind of type of um, machine, le uh, sorry, of supervised problem that we might study is regression, where we are trying to predict a, a value, for an example, based on features or based on, um, a, a, you know, a, a kind of matrix of it. Of input data. Um, um, so regression. So regression. Um, we can we can perform in a few, a few different ways. So it, it, there's there's examples in this in this uh, chapter that you know. So we we cover polynomial regression where you're taking an input value, a single input value, and converting it into um, a range of features. So you're taking a constant term, the value, the input value itself, the square of that value, and so on, and then using that vector of features to um, fit a, a model rather than just using the feature itself so um, you can kind of expand upon the set of features that are um, in a data set um, or trim them down or whatever anyway so that's a regression model a typical a, a well-known kind of um, regression model is the linear regression um, where you take a an intercept term and a, a weight, and then, you know, uh, kind of can make a, a straight line prediction from the input data. Um, so how does that connect, though, to probabilistic modeling? Um, where was it now? NLL. Yes, so a, a, a typical example, uh, um, so for any of these kind of regression models, we'd have a some form of loss function. So in a a, a non-probabilistic um, course on um, regression models, you might cover things like um, the mean squared error loss function, which is where you try to minimize the square of the differences between um 
the observed value in your training data set and its predicted value based on the features that have, have been used as input to, to that model. Um, uh, so yeah, so there's um, mean squared error. That similarly, there are there are other loss functions that minimise things like the um, the absolute difference in 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 in, uh, in the observed and predicted value. Um, So the connection to probabilistic modeling is is basically that um, you can use a kind of um, normal distribution centered on the um, centered on the um, predicted values of um uh, from a model and and kind of convert um and 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 based on that for for all of your examples you kind of get a um sense of the the likelihood of the observed data given the weights and, and things and the topology of your 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 model please jump in if you're um less um haphazard with your statistical knowledge than I am. Um, uh, but that's my kind of understanding of it is that, um, but, but also this, this, this kind of normal model um, uh, based around the, 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 the kind of errors in a, in a model um, has a, a quite a close connection to the, the, the non probabilistic, the mean squared error model because again you are trying to minimize the square of the deviations predicted by a model. Yeah, I I mean I can jump in. If you look down at <laughs> one point twenty, so um a lot of statistics, right? Maximum likelihood. So if you can see the derivation down there, one point two. So if you maximize the log likelihood, you are um well, this is negative log likelihood, hmm. but yeah, yeah, you your objective is the same as the MSC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the connection. Yes. Um. Right. Anyway, so um. So we've got two different types of um uh, supervised model. There's a, a little discussion on on deep neural networks, which are typically where you have um, your input values enter into the model, and then there's a few different layers of, um, of uh, uh, that those input values enter into. So you, you feed into the first layer, which is similar to a kind of like um, what might be used in a a linear or a logistic model where um, the inputs go into that layer are, are kind of summed and transformed and stuff and then you get an output from that layer. Um, the difference with deep neural networks is that you end up with multiple layers so you feed from one layer to another and, and onwards. Um, so, um, what that, what that translates to, if you're doing say image analysis or you're doing text analysis or something is that the, those first layers that your inputs enter into learn kind of features about the data set that then feed into later layers that kind of use those inferred features as a, a, you know a kind of um modified input effectively um 
Okay, so um, what's this? That's a pollen. Um, right. So, um, what are we studying now? Unsupervised learning. Unsupervised learning is a, a little bit different from uh, supervised learning, where with supervised learning you might have uh, the the known class of of your various um, examples in your data set, or you might know the actual value that you want to predict, be it a house price or, or, or whatever. Um, with unsupervised learning, you don't have those kind of, you don't have that output. And you're trying to identify features of the data set that are interesting of their own right. So that might be um, uh, clusters of, of example data that have a, 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 a similarity, or it might be um, uh, combinations of the features that um, identify interesting kind of um, aspects of, of a data set. So, um, so it's a less kind of well-defined um, type of task um, in, in unsupervised learning. But they, they kind of make the connection that like the, it, unsupervised learning is kind of what we do when we learn as a young child um, because we're not constantly getting feedback um, right and wrong answers we're kind of filling in a lot of blanks for ourselves um anyway um what's the other thing uh reinforcement learning uh, reinforcement learning is another kind of task where this is more typical of like a kind of uh say a robotics project or something like that where you're learning um the the thing that you're trying to learn is how um, say you have a robot embedded in some environment, what you're trying to learn based on what it can understand of its envi of its of its environment is how it should be behaving at the moment. So um, it might be, say, learning where in which direction it should be moving. Um, or similarly, if you were, um training uh say the um characters in a computer game to to behave uh in in a, a particular way um you would be learning how that character should behave in the game given the current state of the game um so that's a, a kind of a different um type of, of of learning problem i think the vast majority of the things that we're going to study in the parts of the book that we'll be covering are, are, are likely to be supervised learning tasks though right um okay so um so let's talk about um about the now what page was it I should really have stopped that. Um, we are going to start next week with linear discriminant analysis. So these are the different chapters that we're going to cover in the linear models section of the book are um, on, oops, excuse me, just a second. Uh, on oh sorry it's in the spreadsheet anyway that'll be easier um linear discriminant analysis logistic regression and linear regression now if you've done any machine learning at all in the past or you've done any done statistics to any level you will have covered a lot of these you will have covered those three 
types of task. Um, and um, so if we go over to the linear models section, um, we're going to, we have uh, three main sections in linear discriminant analysis. Um, this is a, a a kind of classification type model, and um, we're going to be trying to learn uh, parameters that um, are that that mean that we can learn from the sorry that we can from the data uh, as 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 effectively as possible. Um, with that, we're going to study things like Gaussian discriminant analysis and um, uh, the other the other sections of this book. I think what we ought to do is to do two weeks on linear discriminant analysis, two weeks on logistic regression, and two weeks on linear regression. Um, and I think it should be possible to do that because a lot of the chapters there's mm, mm, mm. oops what was the long contents here um here there are three main sections in the linear discriminant thing there are four main sections in the logistic regression and there's Maybe there's quite a few in 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 linear regression. Um, are we, are we generalized yeah, um, and then there's a generalized linear models thing. the The models that we're going to be studying then weeks are kind of standard statistical toolkit stuff. But the nature of this book means that we'll be learning a lot of the kind of computational and mathematical underpinnings of those models um so yeah so what i'll do during the week is try to build up i'll, I'll rearrange the spreadsheet so that each of each of these first chapters has two weeks each and we have i'll, I'll try and get some presenters down to present different aspects of the, those chapters. Um, later in the book club, we're going to look at uh, neural networks, which are like the, the multi-layer version, the extensions of linear and logistic regression type models. Um, yeah. Um, but I hope, hopefully that makes sense. So this was really a kind of introductory um, session. I'll organize the book club a bit more uh, so that it's a bit more clear what's going to happen in each week and uh, try and get someone to lead each discussion uh, over the coming week. If anyone has anything they'd like to... Um, to discuss on the contents of the book, feel free to use the Slack channel. The Slack channel is there so that we can all kind of learn together. And if there's stuff in the book that's confusing or that you can't quite follow, it's the best place to to um, ask questions about it. The um, the the PDF that I've I've been presenting. Um, is in a Creative Commons license. So that means that uh, this isn't actually the, the kind of final version of the book, but um, the, the version that we have here is under a, a quite a permissive license that will mean we're able to show figures from it on screen and, and things uh, so that we can discuss it while we're, we're working through it. Um, 
Uh, I've I've been asked in the the meeting chat whether uh, the same person should discuss eat it should present each of the two week um, parts of a chapter. Um, I'd probably be inclined to say that's probably it. It feels a little like it might be too much for uh, one person. To, to do that in in two week you know to do it in two juxtaposed weeks to me others can can jump in um anyway um yes so so next week I'll be looking for someone to do a presentation on the linear discriminant the first half of the linear discriminant chapter uh pick out interesting topics within it stuff that you found um that you didn't previously know stuff that um uh you that when you've studied these topics before is it, it there's a, a slightly different viewpoint in this book to to what's been covered um but yeah uh, hopefully this has been interesting. I, I know it was quite an introductory thing and possibly teaching. Cool, cool. We've got a volunteer already. Um, um, but, you know, it's an introductory week and we're getting to know each other and everything. So I think it, it's quite nice to do the, the introductory um, content. Anyway. Hey, Russ, I've got a question about um, the coding. Okay. Um, I don't know uh, exactly how, you know, what languages he used to do the book. Um, right. But I would assume, I wonder if, if things have changed enough because the space is changing so rapidly. Should Do we want to do any of the examples in a more modern version than what's in the book? Like maybe if he did a bunch in TensorFlow, should we switch it to PyTorch now or Jax? Or should we stick to the book? I, um, to be honest, I don't mind if, if, um, if you think you can do it within a week's preparation, feel free to rewrite a model in, um, PyTorch or, 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 um, or whatever. It does say that the examples in here are, are do use Jacks and PyTorch. Um, oh, okay. But, but I, it, it may not be every one of the chapters, and I, the, the the speed with which the software progresses is considerably faster than the speed at which books get written. So I, I yeah. suspect um, there there may be a few examples in there which could be rewritten. Um, and and to be honest, I. Um, I, I'd be quite interested in seeing how to rewrite them uh, as well. But, uh, yeah, so okay, feel so free to do that. Okay, maybe we kind of take like. it on a week by week basis or a model by model basis. If somebody yeah. wants to change it, that's that's fine. Everybody can flex. Yeah, yeah. If that, if if people are happy with that, yeah, yeah. Just um, when if if you put yourself forward to present, um. Find that part of the book that you find interesting, and 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 just bring some of your enthusiasm forward. If that means you want to explore the different um, uh, programming aspects of it, um, feel free. Yeah, that's cool. And I feel from the uh, website, it seems like the code is mostly towards uh, replicating the. Uh, images the figures from the book so it might not uh, be uh, for like training a model or something uh, okay. we might end up training a model uh, to reproduce the figure but uh, mainly it's towards reproducing the figures okay okay right okay um in that case we can okay well we'll um 
We will. Okay. Um. Well, yeah. I. I it's. But it's still. A, you know. It's still example code that will help people who haven't. Um. So, for example, you're um pulling in NumPy and 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 various other tools as part of the code. If it if it is too much like we're replicating. stuff that perhaps you wouldn't use in a kind of a real project um i'm sure we can find some example data against which the um tools from scikit learn or from pytorch or whatever can be can be run but we'll discuss that in slack if that's cool right thanks okay Right. Anyway, um, thanks everyone for coming along. Um, uh, I'm Russ, and um, if anyone's watching along on YouTube, um, this is, I should have said at the very start of this, this is a book club run by the data science learning community, which you can find online and, and for which there's a Slack channel, um, a Slack community, sorry, that uh, you can join. If you want to join in the discussion on this um book club you can join in we have a a, a specific channel for for discussion um the probabilistic um probabilistic modeling something what's it called again machine learning probabilistic machine learning book um and um yeah thanks for joining us all this week And I'll see you all next week. We'll discuss on, on Slack who's going to do what, which week, if that's cool. Okay. Right, I will sign off.